I can pick that line up from the right, but I'm going to have to reposition and take it out on the left side. In other words, I'm backhand casting so that the line is safely on this side of me and it won't come near me. And so backhand casting solves the problem of wind from your casting side. I'll make a quarter turn, and now with the wind coming from my back in this direction, we will have to make changes in our timing and in our power. If we do a normal cast and hope that line can unroll, it will not. The line will be crashed back into your body because the wind won't let it unroll. So all we need to do is get it up high and then come forward right away, letting the wind help unroll it in the direction you're going. So we use extra force and change the timing so we do not wait for that line to unroll. And don't let your rod tip go back any farther than vertical on heavy winds. Just up and drive it out. Now, we have one more quarter, and this is an easy one. The wind is still coming from this direction, and so now it's from my left. I'm a right-handed caster. I can cast at any angle I want, and the fly will be safely away from me. So this is the easiest of the quarters. But what you need to practice are the difficult ones. Don't just go out and practice casting on a sunny, even-tempered day. Go out when the wind is blowing and do what I've just done. Put your face to it, put your back to it, do those quarters. Do it without a hook, but you will find that it will do a great deal for you and you'll go out with confidence. And when you're in the river fishing with the wind, it'll just be a breeze. That's a double haul. It makes casting long lines easier so that you can fish all day and not tire. What happens is that by using that second hand, you are adding speed to your line. The rod is loaded more deeply, and that transfers to greater energy in your line. And you need high line speed for longer casts or for casting into winds. Let me show you the difference between using a haul and not using a haul. With this much line, I have to do everything perfectly. I have long strokes, lots of body motion, and lots of force. When I add the double haul, my stroke shortens, there's less body movement, and I have gained line speed. Learning to double haul is easy if you have those rod hand mechanics down pat. If you do it too soon in your progress, it will be like trying to pat your tummy and rub your head at the same time. So get those rod hand mechanics down and then the hole will become very simple to learn. Let's look at how you can learn it in the horizontal plane in close to slow motion. If you remember that the power snap is in the middle of your stroke, the first part is a loading move and we can learn the double haul the same way. Loading move, power snap, follow through. Load, snap, follow. Now, to add the hauling hand, we do not haul anywhere except on the power snap. So the first move is just to get everything started moving through the air. Now on the power snap, the rod hand goes right and the line hand goes left exactly the same length of time and follow through will give the line back and let it land on the grass. No hauling, power snap and haul, give the line back. Watch my line hand moves away and always is above the reel so it doesn't get wrapped around the rod. Loading move, power snap, follow through. Remember that the haul is fast and the giving back is slow. The targets are out there only for a reference. If you make too long a haul or too long a stroke, you'll see that the fly and line will go far away from it. If it's too short, it will go up ahead of it. And so to have some semblance of what's right, you want to just keep it going straight and stop it in line with the target. And after you have done this a few times, let it land and think you know what's happening, then you can pick it up in the air. Remember though that those on the haul, the hands move opposite each other, completely opposite, and on this forward one, I'm going to pull my hand down to my side. 
so that the line doesn't get caught on the reel. Now, keep it up in the air, and off the tip of the rod, that line should be unrolling in a straight line, in line with the targets. Haul, give back only at the speed that that unrolling line allows you to. Don't give it back all at once now, as we did on the grass. Slow it down. The haul is fast, the give back is slow. Fast, slow, fast, slow. After you've done this a few times and think it's beautiful, I'll tell you what else to do. Close your eyes, and then you'll feel it, and it will be smooth, and your timing will be better. And then open your eyes and see the result, and when it feels good, let it go. Here's an exercise you can use to practice your double haul that's very easy and it's actually fun. You don't have to think about the mechanics. Put the rod under your arm against your body and wrap your arm around it. And then just swing your body from side to side to make the stroke. Now add the line hand and start hauling. Haul away from the rod. Haul it, haul it. Don't give that line back fast. Give that line back very slowly. It's quite, just about as easy as it looks. Now let me demonstrate it in your normal fishing planes. Let's start with that vertical plane. Remember that the line hand pulls away from the rod hand, so you're going forward, which is a little unnatural until you get used to it. But I'm trying to keep that line from getting tangled around the reel. If I pulled it down this way, I might get caught on that reel as I come up. So away keeps that line free of the reel. For the off vertical cast, I'm gonna turn my back foot out, turn my body slightly to the side, and again, that hand pulls away on the power snap and gives the line back sweetly. I always picture that being like a violin bow coming up, sweetly. Quickly, sweetly. I hope you get to like it as much as I do. There are two stances that will solve all of the problems that you encounter between distance and accuracy. Accuracy is a little bit like throwing a dart doesn't matter how you stand, but your shoulders are square to the target. The rod is vertical. My hand comes in close to my face, and it's a little bit like throwing darts. You're thinking of accuracy. As that line lengthens, drop back one foot and shift your weight, and that makes your strokes a little bit longer. But as we get long lines, it gets to be more like a baseball throw. And we change our stance from square to the target by rotating at the hips, opening the shoulders backward, angling the rod off vertical to about 130, and rotating my shoulders from square to the target to sideward to the target. And that way I can get the longest strokes most easily. Now let me show you how to do it without a rod. Let's just make our thumb the rod shaft. And we're gonna tilt it off Instead of vertical, we're going to tilt it off to 130. We're going to turn our back foot out so we can rotate. And we're going to start the cast on a straight line coming back into the body. Elbow remains forward. At the end of the power snap, those shoulders have turned sideward. The drift move follows out, and the loading move forward comes in again. And now the power snap is right to the target and follow through. So you start with your shoulders square to the target, and it's on the power snap that you rotate. Out, in, cast. The thumbnail is literally making a straight line, which the elbow facilitates. But I end that back cast stroke with the elbow forward, and only reach out on the drift move. You can look at your back cast in this technique because it's not going directly behind you. 
It's a very comfortable position and can really let you cast your farthest in tough conditions. For your longest casts, in addition to the double haul technique, you want to add another one, which is shooting line on the final back cast. This will give you the longest cast you can make. We shoot line on the back cast at the same time in the stroke that we do on the forward cast, which is after the power snap right there. How much you shoot depends on feeling. We can't say two feet, three feet. You'll know if it's too much, the whole thing will collapse. So you have to practice it until you find out how much you can shoot for any given outfit. So watch what it does. We're going to pick up and do two full casts as if we were fishing. I'm only going to shoot line backward once on the second full cast. So I'll do that for you. No shoot, shoot a little, shoot a lot, and do it. Let me do it one more time. So I pick up, shoot a little, shoot a lot, and present it. Once you can do this, you will be so comfortable in making those long casts and you'll have your fly back in the water as quickly as possible. On a double haul technique, we give the line back after we have pulled it in. But if we should have a back wind, we can't do that because you can't give that back against that wind, especially with a heavy fly or an air resistant bug. So to solve that problem, we have a single haul. And a single haul is not half of a double haul. A single haul pulls the line in, but it does not give it back. So we can do a single haul on the back cast, coordinated exactly with the power snap. And now through the rest of the cast, the hands maintain their positions, and we just come forward, no haul, no haul, and cast. Or we can do a single haul only on the forward cast, where we don't haul. Now we haul with the power snap. And we can also do two single hauls for your longest cast. I'm going to haul on the back cast. Haul, don't give it back, haul. So those hauls coordinate with the power snap on the back cast and on the forward cast. And at no point do you give the line back. When we're fishing with long lines and have to repeat the same length over and over again, we have to retrieve that shooting line in order to make the same cast. And if we just put that line in the river, the river's current will take it downstream and add too much resistance and you won't be able to shoot long lines. So we have to make loops in our line hand. But first we make a loop for the river so that it's touching the water and then on the cast, there will be resistance and it will not come up and wrap around your rod butt. So that's the river loop. Then I'm going to count stretches of my hand. That's one stretch, two stretches, and drop the second. So I have another large loop. Then one, I'm going to shorten it, and a half, drop the half. And the final loop will be the shortest, just one stretch. And I must hold them carefully on my fingers and not twist it. Now, if I do everything right, that should all come off my hand into a beautiful long cast. This is not an easy technique. It took me a very long time to be able to work it out, and I have to think carefully every single time I do it. But once you have mastered it, it makes getting that fly back in the water quickly as easy as possible. Practice is what's going to make you a better caster. Look around you, wherever you live, and you'll find targets. Here we have all kinds of things. A deck gives me an opportunity to practice casting under it, which would be the same as being able to cast under an overhanging branch. A set of stairs gives you numerous opportunities. You can cast at different levels, different lengths. Just pop that fly so it touches a stair. So first, find out how long your line is and shorten or lengthen it so you might start at the very bottom and then work your way up 
adding a little bit of line on each step. And then if you have a slot like this between the house and the rail, and so casting in between those two in, a, in that slot, you can practice going in there because there are lots of times you need to be very straight on your casting. A truck gives you all kinds of targets. Start with the biggest part, with the hood, any place on the hood. There, and you'll find out how much line exactly and what it looks like. Then touch the windshield, shorten your line and work on that little rear view mirror. Lengthen your line if necessary. Touch the window. Touch the back windows. And don't forget the tires. Another horizontal cast. Flower pots are always good targets. Watch where your line is unrolling. Try to pop it in there. Practice has got to be fun or you just won't do it. So you don't need to go to a casting pond or a river to practice. It's right there wherever you live. Make it a game, make it challenging, make it fun because it really is and it will pay off. The longer we fish, the fewer casts we want to make. We don't want to waste time with that fly in the air. So instead of picking up the line opposite where it's been lying and false casting our way to another position, we can pick it up opposite where we're going, throw the back cast back, and there is the forward cast. From this direction, I'm going to make my back cast opposite where I'm going, lift opposite, and put it down. I've saved all those casts. The way I'm doing it is to rotate my hand and arm on the loading move. As I come up, I'll rotate so the palm is going to be up and my back cast is going to be made opposite. From left to right, I'm going to rotate with my palm going downward and it comes up on the loading move, snap, present. And that way we save lots of time with those false casts. This is normal false casting, the way you will present nine out of 10 of your dry fly presentations. Everything lands sweetly and just about at once. There's no extra force, it's all smooth. But there's another technique which we call hovering, which allows you to be more specific in terms of being accurate and to have some way of judging where that fly is relative to your target. The fly hovers in the air for a split second and you can see it relative to that target. And the way we do it is to add a little extra force in the power snap. Make a short arc through that power snap and have the angle of the cast move from high to low. The loop unrolls to the water and stops just above it until you see where it is. You like it, you just drop it. Watch it again. Very short stroke, very short power snap. The fly hangs in the air. You like it, you drop it. Presentation is all about positioning. If you can stand in a place where presentation is easy and keeps you hidden from the trout, then you've got it made. But sometimes we have difficult circumstances. Right now I have deep water ahead of me, and so I can't just make a straight cast to get around that rock. I have got to do a horizontal cast, but I can't just do a straight horizontal cast where it goes over the rock. So what I'm going to do is a way of curving a cast. I start with horizontal, and then I pull the rod tip back and slip line to present it around that curve. Watch again. After the power snap, I'll slip line and pull the rod tip back and get that fly way up where I can hardly see it. Again, there's a second technique for curving that starts with a vertical cast. And now instead of making a straight power snap, 
I'm going to curve my power snap so the tip of the rod will curve outward. You see how that line is shaped? And then drop it. Watch it again. Straight, curving power snap, curving power snap, curving power snap. This is another special technique I call reversing, in which you make two forward casts, one in each direction. And why would you do that? Well, there are a couple of reasons. You might have an area behind you that's very small for your back cast, and you're afraid you're going to hit it. And so you can turn around and look at where you're going to put that back cast, and then reverse and present. Another reason you would want to do it would be if you had very heavy winds coming from the back. And so you could cast into it, because you're much stronger with a forward cast than you are with a back cast. Reverse, and then go with the wind to present it. And the way you do it is to make the cast after the power snap, while the line is unrolling, pull your elbow in. Snap, pull in, and ready for your power snap in the right direction. Watch it one more time. Power snap, reverse, put your eye on the target, and you'll feel as if you have outwitted something. This is a cast I use for weighted nymphs. Instead of making a standard back and forward cast, at the end of the drift, just lift the line and the leader until the weighted nymph is on the surface. Reverse your arm and present again upstream. And you have saved lots of time and you find it very comfortable and easy and safe because that weighted fly is not waving around in the air. So as the drift ends, point your rod at the fly Lift the line, lift the leader, turn your hand and arm, bring it in close to you, and power snap forward. Always use a soft power snap with a weighted nymph. Learning to do what you've been watching will be a lot easier if you think in terms of practicing indoors, not just outdoors. It's a matter of thinking about it, and you always carry with you your hand, the connecting link. If you're in an office, put a pen in your hand. Use it as the rod shaft. If you're in the kitchen, use a cooking spoon. You can go through all the hand motions and the mechanics with these things. Or you can use your own rod butt, with or without a reel, going back and forth and up and down in those casting mechanics. This is where the focus is. Or you can get an indoor practice rod like this, which we call fly -o. It's a little three-foot rod with yarn for line. And even though the yarn has no weight, like a fly line does, it has bulk and requires the same kind of effort to push it through the air. And yes, it does load that rod. Now, golfers have always been able to practice their swings and putts indoors with small foam golf balls. And that's what gave my late husband, Lee Wolf, the idea for this. Now, if you have a ceiling that's too low, you can sit on a stool or on a chair, or you can kneel. And kneeling puts it all into a fishing perspective, as if you were wading knee deep in a river. You can practice all kinds of techniques with this fly -o. You start with the roll cast, the one-stroke technique. Belly the line behind your hand and roll it out on the rug. Now, it may not roll out perfectly on the rug, but it will roll out perfectly on the water. And you can do your basic cast, which is picking the line up and putting it down. And you can false cast to practice presenting dry flies with delicacy, both forehand and practice that backhand in case the wind is blowing from your casting side. You can cast in all of the angles. You can cast from horizontal on the right to nearly horizontal on the left. And we can make change of direction casts, where you make a back cast on one side, reposition, and make your cast on another side. Change sides. Back, change, forward. And don't forget the oval. 
The oval brings the line in under the rod tip. And as that line unrolls, it is traveling upward. Very, very good for weighted nymphs and bulky flies because the line is unrolling upward. And so you're